So we're talking about recycler views, and I want to talk about how the view holder works with recycler views. So we saw this code before where we have a recycler view list uh, that uses, this is um, some data about how to deal with um, um, manipulations to the list, like moving things and deleting things. But here's the basics. We have an adapter, we have our layout manager. And then, uh, that's it. We have our adapter and our layout manager. And so I want to look at this adapter. So the adapter uh, um, inherits from list adapter, which you can read the documentation. A list adapter has this nice feature that we never have to call um, uh, notify data set change. We never have to tell it what's changed. We just pass it a new list. We make sure it has a reference to the old list. And then it actually does a diff and actually uses uh, background threads to do that diff. And it figures out what's changed and it updates the display for us. So it's very easy to use. We're paying some computation in order to use it, but it's really convenient. And the thing I want to focus on is what's the deal with this idea of a view holder? So we saw that even in a list view, the Android runtime can pass us back an old view object and we can fill it in. So uh, people like this idea so much with recycler views that they constructed an entire pattern where instead of just having the runtime pass you in the old view, there's an actual object called a view holder which holds that view. So what can we do with that? So here we have our adapter. It inherits from list adapter. Okay. And the list adapter has this diff object. Um, and I'll just, th this is sort of not the focus. This diff object is how the um, adapter figures out what items are the same and what are not. And it's, it's very simple uh, at its core. This, these are routines for it to figure out if I've got the old list and I've got the new list, what do I need to redisplay? And so the two uh, methods that you have to implement, are these the same item? Which is easy to do uh, by, say, checking the hash code. You could even potentially check whether they are the same uh, reference to the same object. But even if it's a different object, if it's the same hash code, that's, uh, that's, that, that's good enough for, for this list. And then are the contents the same? Because sometimes the object can change a little bit, but it displays the same, and this gives uh, the runtime a hint about that so that it, it, it can really minimize the amount of redisplay that it has to do because it's doing work to do that redisplay. So this diff stuff is a feature of the list adapter. So we have to supply it to the list adapter, but this isn't sort of the primary thing that we're looking at. What we're looking at is what's the deal with the view holder? So a view holder is a nested class. And a nested class is a class that's defined inside the scope of another class. And so the name is scoped inside that class. And you can have this keyword inner, which means that this class can see everything in its enclosing class, which is just kind of convenient. And it certainly makes sense to do that if the inner class really trusts the outer class and is there to implement some additional functionality, which is what's going on here. So we've got this inner class view holder object, I mean, call it name and rating view holder, but we just call it sort of view holder. Um, it inherits from recycler view holder. And the, the deal with the view holder is that um, we are going to, remember we, we have a text view that we are interested in. And if you recall, we, hmm? Oh, it's called item view. Um, we did a find view by ID on this text view, uh, r.id.pick, so you heard text text. Uh, we did this before, uh, where we got a view and we actually wanted to find the text view within that view. We're doing that here in the view holder. The magic of the view holder, however, is that we're only going to have to do it once when we create the view holder object. 
And then from then on, we are never going to have to call find view by ID again. That's why a view holder is fundamentally more efficient than having the runtime pass us the old view object because we don't have to, to look up the, we don't have to do find view by ID every time we rebind. That's the big difference. Um, and why is that important? Because find view by ID is expensive. Um, so this is our text view, this is our image view. We saw this pattern before. And how are we gonna initialize text view? We also saw this uh, pattern before. We're gonna set the text to, um, you know, here we have an item and set it to the name. So that's, that's, what, that's what we're displaying. Okay, so I think that's, yeah. And then uh, again, we've got a Boolean here. And if the Boolean is true, we're setting it to this happy face. And if the Boolean is false, we're setting it to a sad face. Okay, and um, this function is called bind. Uh, that is something we have control over. We could name it whatever we want, but I think it's good to name it bind because that's what's going on. Binding is when you take an item, you take the information for that item, and you put it into the view. And the thing is, up to this point, every time we, we did bind, we called find view by ID. Well, look, look what's going here. Am I calling find view by ID? I am not. I am using this text view. How did that get initialized? When the object, the view holding object gets initialized, we get the pointer in the view holding object and set it to this text view. And then, and then that's it. We don't have to call find view by ID anymore because we have a pointer from the, the view holder object into the view. Same thing with the image view, it's a pointer, and we initialize it once when we create the view holder, and you know, we can set an on-click listener, we can do a lot, some other things, that's how we're getting the, um, the, the uh, clicking behavior for the, for the, uh, uh, the rows in, in the recycler view. Um, and then every time we bind, we are just using these references which we initialized at the beginning. Uh, all right, it's, it's, it's upset that you know, it's, it's saying this could be null, but uh, we know it's not gonna be null. Okay, so um, we called that function bind, but there is a function we have to override in the adapter. This is the adapter. The um, runtime also has to bind. It knows that it's, it, it's got to bind. And so there's a callback that we have to implement called onbind view holder. And it gives us a view holder and a position and says, hey, bind this object. So we say, all right, well, get item is how we figure out in the adapter. That's how we figure out what item is at this position. So we call get item. We get whatever item is at this position. And then we pass it to holder.bind. And again, we are defining, um, we don't have to call this function bind, but it's useful because it's being called an on bind view holder and what it's doing is binding. Okay, and that is it. So what's nice about this adapter is that it is really pretty simple. Um, a lot of the magic is happening in it, with this list adapter and this diff. This on bind view holder is a callback but a lot of times we can make this callback super simple. I'm, I'm sort of in favor of making my uh, adapters simple and my view holders less simple. Because um, the, the logic has to go somewhere and here it's sort of closest to the object. And so I feel like it makes sense to put it in the view holder and try to keep this as sort of boilerplate as possible. I mean, you look at this and you just say, oh, there's nothing going on here. This is, I'm binding this object, I'm looking it up and I'm binding it. What does binding it actually mean? Oh, it's, you know, it's this thing. This is the actual binding logic. Okay. Um, so if we have that, yeah, that is really, Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. So uh, not not going back to here. So this is um, this is the this is the, the view holder. I wanted to look at the iPad uh, just to drive this point home. That 
what we're doing in the view holder is we are basically caching pointers. This is a view, this is an actual layout. This layout has things like an icon, and we are uh, caching the reference or the pointer to that, uh, that image view, or to that text view, or to something else. So we initialize these once, uh, and then we use them at runtime without calling find view by ID. So uh, every time we rebind, we call find view by ID up to this point. However, in a lot of cases, uh, our rows, we know exactly what the structure of the row is. We know it's got like one text view, it's got one image view. Sometimes, you know, if you have very dynamic views, maybe you don't know that, but most of the time when you're displaying a list, it's items of the same sort of category or type in that list. And so we know what the structure is. In that case, let's create a view holder, which holds a reference to that view and allows us to cache these pointers inside the view so that we don't do find view by ID when we're binding, we do find view by ID when we create the view holders. We only create like 13 of the view holders even if there are 100 elements in our list. The bind operation just uses this text view in this case or it uses this image view that was initialized when the object was initialized, not when the binding happens. Okay, so that's how, that's the reason why we use view holders with recycler views.